So, the strategy. I think it's what most of you guys want. <clears throat> right. So, which currency pairs to use? So, which currency pairs can we use the strategy on? Any. It doesn't matter what it is. You can use it on any currency pair. So, there's no limitations. Okay. Which time frame will it work on? So this strategy, <clears throat> you can use pretty much on any time frame, right? But I wouldn't go lower than a 15 minute time frame. Okay. Um, the higher the time frame, personally, the better. Uh, but what I'm going to show you guys is I'm going to show you the examples purely using like the, the one hour time frame. Okay. We're going to use a higher time frame bias for trend to predict where the market's going for selling and buying pressure so you're going to use two time frames in this system but um, if you're going to actually place trades i wouldn't go lower than 15 minutes because it starts getting a bit unreliable uh, the signals and you can get sort of whipsawed out so you'll keep getting stopped out things like that what time of day is best to trade it so the best times are, um, some of you know this, some of you won't, you've got London Open, New York Open, Sydney Open, and Tokyo Open, okay? This is when, uh, so for example, if we say London Open, this is when um, trading kicks off in London, okay? There's a specific time, I'm gonna give you all the times when trading kicks off. Um, London, I'll give you the times now actually. So these are the times. So London Open will kick off at 8 a.m. All right. You'll start seeing some movement about 7.30, but 8 o'clock you'll start seeing a push in the market. They're the times you want to be looking to take advantage of these trades. Okay, because that's when you're gonna get um you're gonna get the biggest push. You're gonna spend the least time in a trade because you're going to potentially hit your targets a lot quicker okay that will last until about i'd say about half nine coming up to ten then the markets go dead a little bit they go really quiet then come new york open which is um 1 p.m in the afternoon new york opens which is eight o'clock their time in the morning you'll get that same sort of push um, in the market because all the orders start coming in again another good time to take the trade um, Sydney open now Sydney open is at 10 o'clock our time yes you get a push but ideally you don't want to trade 10 o'clock at night because um, so write this down put this in brackets make sure it's in red so you can see 10 o'clock at night okay is when the new day's candle opens for us and you get what there's called a spread in your brokerage so the spread is the price that you can buy and sell the market at, okay and it's the commission and uh, depending on what type of account you got it's the commission that a brokerage will take now that widens and what that can cause you is to get into trades at the wrong prices that's as simple as i can put it if you get in a trade at 10 o'clock and you've got these wide spreads, you'll get into trades at completely different prices you want. It might be high, it might be lower, and it can actually eat into your profits. You might even get stopped out prematurely um, out of a trade. I wouldn't recommend trading on the Sydney Open. That lasts for an hour, so that will stop at 11. And then everything comes back down to normal, okay? So then if you are gonna trade late at night, the next one will be the Tokyo Open, which is 12. And again, that will last for a couple of hours. You get some nice pushes during the Tokyo Open. Um, I think everyone in this room is um, UK based, I think. Um, so the best two times for you guys will be London Open at eight o'clock or um, New York open providing you guys can get to your charts at that point if you can't and you need to do swing trading um, you can take it on the higher time frames then in that case I would look to take it around sort of 11 o'clock um, after that 
Sydney window where the spreads widen and commissions go up and everything goes a bit mad. Um, I'll wait for that to settle and then I will take it 11 onwards and then go to bed if you're going to do like the daily and the monthly time frame sort of thing. Um, but I can always go into more detail on that um, when people start trading they want to know a little bit more about that. Okay. <clears throat> so the rules to the uh, for the strategy now you definitely need to write these down uh, this is recorded so you can always watch it back but write these down okay so check the market direction on the daily time frame so remember what I said about candles um, each candle represents whatever time frame you're on when we go to the daily um, candle uh, daily time frame each candle is going to represent one day's worth of activity. All right. We want to look at that particular day's candle and see where it's pushing. Are we pushing up? Are we pushing down? And then we want to place our trades on the bias of that daily candle. Okay. You can even take. Um, like two days worth of information so the current candle and the previous but I would just stick to today's current candle and what it's doing because if we've opened the day and overnight we're pushing down and um, the likelihood that that candle is going to close let's say bearish is going to be a lot higher than if it's going to close bullish okay if the candle starts off and we're pushing down or we're pushing up, the likelihood that for the rest of the day it's going to continue in that direction is a lot higher. So going to the lower time frames, the smaller time frames, your hours, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, that's the bias you want to be taking your trading. Okay, you want to be going with that higher time frame bias. You don't want to look at a lot of information, just what is the current day doing? Because we're going to get in and out of these trades and we're going to be done for the day, okay? Trades can only be taken in that direction, which is what I said. So we only want to go by that daily um, bias. Then what we're going to do, we're going to go to the one hour and we're going to check your support and resistance levels. All right, and we're going to use the line chart, how I showed you a minute ago. And we're just going to plot the most recent support and resistance levels. Okay, the most recent. We don't care about loads of lines, just the most two recent. So we're literally um, keeping it as simple as possible, okay, on this one. Then what we want to do is we want to wait for the one hour candle to break and close beyond the support or resistance level. Now this is important. This is why I said to you ignore the wicks and we need the bodies. Alright, we need that body to break and physically close beyond one of these levels that we plot. Make sure the confirmation candle, so that's the one that breaks, is in the same direction as the higher time frame bias. So, what I mean by that is, if on the daily time frame, the candle is pushing up, and we go to the one hour, and we are only looking for buys, okay? We only want to take buys. And we plot support and resistance levels. Ideally, what we want is we want the candle to break resistance okay because the resistance is a ceiling we know the daily is going up we plotted our support resistance so we want a candle to break to the upside right so we want it to break the resistance level and that should give us um, a green candle okay because it's broken to the upside in reverse if we got a daily candle and it's going down we go to the one hour time frame. What we're looking for is to break support. We want it to break support to the downside, giving us a red candle, okay? By the candle color, the candle color doesn't really matter, but it's just so you know, you know that you're going in the right direction. Um, we just want it to go in that direction, the daily time frame. Right, <clears throat> entry. The entry is next bar market okay this means you have to wait for the one hour candle to close and enter next bar so until that candle closes beyond that support or resistance level you're not taking a trade 
you have to wait for it to close you can't predict oh it will it won't this or that because when i show you on the charts you'll easily see that sometimes it pushes beyond and then it retraces and close within again and then what will happen is that the market might pull back a bit and stop you out and all sorts will happen so we need it to close that is one of the key things okay please write that in red highlight it put brackets around it stops so um for some of you that don't know okay um a stop is a a predetermined level that if the market goes against you um your however much you're risking okay so let's say you don't want to lose more than 20 pound okay um you'll predetermine a level to say right i don't want to lose 20 pound and the level is here so you say i don't want the market to go beyond this level um because if it goes beyond this level i'm wrong all right there is a risk of losing money and then from your entry to that level then you can work out according to your account balance how much to risk so then you you risk let's say that 20 pound or that 100 pound or 1000 pound whatever it is you want to risk in that um that bracket so from your entry to your stop let's say it's 20 pips or 50 pips you know right so if if i want to risk x amount i've got to risk this much per pip because when it gets there um that's how much i'm going to lose okay anytime you place a trade you have to have this stop i'm going to show you guys a stop anyway and um, where we're going to place it but if anything don't have a target but always have a stop please you need to reserve that capital in trading um if you're trading without stops please stop get a new job honestly because you shouldn't be trading without stops okay targets uh target is the level that you're obviously want to come out at, at a profit um so targets will go one to one or 1.5 to one risk to reward so if you're risking um i trade on a percentage basis so let me talk to you in percentage basis that might be easier um i risk one percent per trade so if um i'm risking one percent on my stop um, my target should be the equivalent of one to one which will give me one percent return or i can go for 1.5 which means if i'm risking one percent i can make one and a half percent return on the trade so not only do i have an edge in the market um, with my system over 50 percent uh, win rate but also by having that additional half a percent um it keeps me moving forward on my account because it means then what i can do is if i lose the next one i lose one percent but i've still got half a percent left in the bank okay so that's what i mean by 1.5 to 1 um you're risking one percent to make one and a half percent you can go for two two to one three to one four to one whatever you want but this system works really well with a one to one or a 1.5 to one risk to reward okay and plus we want to be in and out quickly we don't want to be in trades for days on end so that's all the rules on that note let's go to the charts okay so let's bring this chart on. okay let's fix this i'm going to show you guys some demonstrations let me just um shut down this presentation let me one sec guys Let's find a trending bit of market, okay? Right, I'm gonna take this bit of market because this bit's just plumbing. We all know, we can all see this is just, just falling, 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 okay? Let's start from this very top bit. I know it's cheating a bit because we know it's going down, but, um, you know, training purposes and all that. I'm gonna see because this is the start of our downtrend, okay? right so first things first i want to come to the chart okay and we're going to apply all them rules that um 
I just spoke about and we're going to see how this plans out. So first things first, we want to go to the daily time frame. Lovely. Right. The daily time frame at the moment is pushing up. Okay. You can see this market's pushing up. So we only want to take trades according to this daily candle right here. So then what we want to do is we want to go to the one hour. All right. And we want to plot our support and resistance levels. All right. So how are we going to do that? We are going to go to our line chart. And we are going to um, plot the most uh, relevant support and resistance levels, which are for me here and here. Okay. We've got one here, but I'm going to take the highest possible one, the lowest possible one. All right. I'll mark that anyway, just so you guys can see. Now, because the daily time frame is coming up, we are looking for the market to break resistance. Remember, I said to you, you want to go the same direction as the market. Okay. So we are waiting. For, we want it to break resistance. Now, unfortunately, because we saw the chart go into the downside, um, we know it's not going to break resistance. We're going to end up getting a bearish um, push down. Okay. So let me just forward this a little bit. Okay. So we're moving sideways, moving sideways. Okay, what's the time on this candle? Let's see. Right, so it's late night now, so we should be getting a new daily candle opening in one hour. Okay, right, so that's 24. Okay, so it would have opened here. Right, so what I'm gonna do, we've got a new day now, right? And we know it's gonna go down. Let's go to our new day and have a look what the new day is doing, right? The new day is bearish. Okay, we've had a new candle open and it's already pushed down. So now we're only going for sales, right? We've changed our bias. We know that the daily candles on sales and we want to go with the pressure of that current day's candle. So go back to the one hour. Okay, plot our support and resistance levels. All right. So our support and resistance levels was here we said we had one here. We had one here, okay? Go back to candles. Is everyone with me so far, what I'm doing? Just give me a yes, please. Do you guys understand why I changed my bias? Because the new daily candle opened. I looked at the time, so if I hover here, can we see at the bottom it's got uh, 22, so the new candle would have opened. It opens at 10 o'clock at night, remember I said? Yeah. Okay, lovely. So, what has happened here? Oh, first things first, we want to be really um, careful with these support and resistance levels. We need to get them at the closes of the candles. That's so important, okay? So, I'm just going to adjust my lines to the closes of the candles, very important. Now we know for sure that this candle has pushed down, closed below um, our support level, okay? We know the daily time frame is going down. We're going in that bias. We've got a red candle because it's going bearish. We're all good to go. So what is our next rules? Our next rule is that we need to put the stop, uh, we need to enter next bar market, okay? So I'm gonna get on my trade tool. This is my trade tool. This will show us our stops and our targets for people that haven't used this before. Okay, so green is where our target's gonna go. Stop is up here. Red means it's what we're risking. Uh, green is what we're gonna make, okay? So next bar market means literally when this candle closes, the next one that opens, we're going to continue at that price level. So I'm going to put my entry right there. This line here is uh, the entry price. Okay. And we want to go a couple of pips above the highest point of this red candle. So you see the little wick? This is the only time we're going to use wicks is to place our stop. Okay. 
Other than that, we don't care about it because that's the highest. We don't want to go past that, all right? So let's just go there. Uh, 25. Okay, let me just adjust this. So we've got 25. Let's go 27. Couple of points above, okay? Now, I know it says 270 there, but um, it's taking into account micro lots. So just ignore that last number, all right? Um, 27. Right. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go for... Let's go for 1.5 because I know we got an edge on the market anyway. All right. So there you can see 1.5 roughly. So we're risking one to make 1.5. Okay. So not only have we got edge on the market, but when we make money, we're going to make more than when we lose. Okay. We don't want to take one step forward, two step, steps back. So everyone happy with that trade so far? Are we meeting our rules? Give me a yes. Wonderful. Right, let's play this, okay? Let's see what happens. Right, we're pushing down, okay? Daily pressure, pushing down. We still, oh, we're coming back. Don't, I wouldn't worry because we've still got that daily pressure behind us, okay? Our rules are met. If we get stopped out, we get stopped out, it doesn't matter. And there we go, okay? So, first trade done. First trade finished. We have just made 1.5, okay? All right, let me see if I can write this somewhere with something that won't get deleted. Okay, so win one, okay. Uh, we had one win and then let's go uh, loss none, okay. Uh, can everyone see that there, yeah? Okay, cool. Let's go. Now we are gonna have losses. I'm expecting losses, all right? So that's trading for you. All right, now what we're gonna do? You're done, you're done for the day, okay? You've taken a trade. If you wanna take more, you can take more. I take one to two trades tops a day, okay? Because I'm very strict with what I do. So what I'm gonna do, hit delete, go about my business. I've just made one and a half, I'm risking 1%. I've just made one and a half percent. Um, on that trade done for the day that's more than I'll get in a bank um, in a year and a half of holding it my money in a bank okay now I'm gonna go to the daily time frame what is the daily candle doing right in the chat going down yep okay so what we're gonna do now we're gonna go to the one hour okay we're gonna plot support and resistance levels all right line chart support resistance simple go back to this all right Everyone with me so far? Now, um, because we was in this trade, okay, and this was the candle that um, filled us, we might not necessarily take this one. So what I'm going to play it. Let's just get some more movement on this chart, okay? Pull back now. Let's get a much more relevant support of resistance, okay? Because we would have been in that trade, we would have shut our charts down, gone away for the day okay and then come back and this is now the new new support and resistance levels we're looking at all right so i go back to the chart so now what we're waiting for is this support level to be broken because we know the daily is in a downtrend well i say downtrend down pressure so we want the support to be broken to the downside so let's go we haven't broken resistance, haven't broken. If we did break resistance, okay, don't worry too much. All we do is clean our chart, we go back to the daily and we have a look, is the daily still going down? Okay, if it is, we just wait and see if the market uh, comes back around and breaks the level, okay? So even if we poke our heads up a little bit, 
um, it, it's nothing to worry about, all right? Um, let's just delete these off. All right, so let's go, let's see. Right, didn't break. Haven't broken. Haven't broken. Do you see why it's so important to wait for the candles to close? Yeah. There, what have we done there? We have broke and closed below our support, okay? In the same direction as where that daily candle was going. Everyone agree? Give me a yes. Wonderful, okay. So, all our rules are met. Let's get this trade on. We're gonna enter next bar market. All right, shrink this down. Put it there. Okay, we'll do some, um, we'll do some bullish ones as well. We'll do some uptrend ones as well. Um, so what we got, 25 pips. Let's just go 27, two, two pips on top, okay. Put that. And what we're going to do is we want to go for 1.5. All right, 1.5. That's my risk to reward. Happy days. Let's play. There you go. One candle. Okay, one hour. In one hour, you've just made another 1.5. So let's go to text. Um, uh, I don't know how to actually bring this. Bear me guys, I'm just trying to adjust this thing. Oh, there we go. Okay, so now we're gonna change this to two wins, all right? So we had 1.5, 1.5, that's 3% we just made, okay? And we've had no losses so far. Lovely. Let's delete that, okay? Delete everything on our chart, because we're done for the day, we just made one and a half percent. We're going off, we're gonna go do whatever, go gym, go whatever, whatever, okay? So now let's wait for um, a bit of a pullback, okay? Days go in, we're gonna again, because remember we got no support, all right? We are in a downtrend, you can see this market's pushing down, so we wanna break levels of support, okay? Levels of support, so there we go, we're starting to pull up a little bit, all right? So, um, this is gonna be a level of um, support here, resistance. We can see we're still trending down. We haven't broke none of these outside returns to tell us otherwise, okay? This is why it was important to go through trending markets because we are just uh, pushing to the downside. We're doing the ebb and flows like what we said. Okay, you can see that clearly. So we're not too fast that this is gonna change direction at the moment. Let's go to our daily, all right? What's the daily doing? Current candle, still pushing down. Pre two previous candles are still pushing down. Now, if you look here, can you see we've got green candle, green candle, green candle, green candle. This is one, two, three, four, five days worth of pushing. So during that time, you can take one to two trades that day, one to two trades that day, one to two trades that day, in that direction that the market's pushing. The minute the market changes direction, you want to be taking sells, okay? So we've got pushing down, pushing down. We only want to look for sells. Let's go to our one hour time frame. All right. Uh, we can see the market's pulled back, so we're going to create some sort of um, support here. Let's go to our line chart. Look at that nice little point there, all right? Keep it simple. Keep it very simple. I'm not going to bother drawing resistance because we, we only want um, support to be broken, but I'll draw that there anyway. But the main level of resistance, to be honest with you, is up here. Um, because if we go back to the chart, can you see that? That's not really, this was more of a pullback here than this, this little bit. All right, so let's um, delete that. Okay, now let's wait for this candle to break. So we know we're in sales. Oh, look at that, I thought that was gonna break then. Um, man, can you imagine if you took a sell down here without waiting for that candle to close? 
um, I've just seen a message sorry one sec so for EG um, I'm just reading this someone's wrote saying let me so for EG if we had a 10k account and we have done 3% that would be 300 pound right trying to under yes yes yep that would be uh, 300 return on your investment on a 10k account so I always risk percentage wise rather than fixed lot what fixed lot is is um, when people uh, like I was saying earlier I only want to risk 20 pound this trade or I only want to risk um, 100 pound this trade you can do it that way but by doing a percentage based uh, look at it this way so if I risk 1% per trade I need to get a hundred trades wrong okay um, to completely wipe out my account now if I've got a system that's over 50% right and I'm risking a one and a half to one the likelihood of me being wrong a hundred times is very unlikely to blow that account now as you're losing money and you're risking 1%, you're risking 1% of your account shrinking as well. So your your the amount you're investing and your risk is going to be smaller and smaller and smaller. But as you win, as your account grows in equity, that 1% is going to get larger and larger and larger money value wise that you're risking per trade. So your returns will then start to be bigger and bigger and bigger on the one percent okay um yeah so i calculate the lot size to make sure i only risk yes okay and the way to um uh, before we go okay i'll give you a website um or an app that you can actually use all you do is type in the pips and your account value and it gives you the percent the amount to risk okay so um yeah, I'll go through that in the Q&A. Just remind me in the Q&As for that one. Right, let's get back to um, this. So, what was we waiting for? Okay, we was waiting for a uh, structure level to be broken. Um, so, not broken. Not pushing up, pushing up, pushing up. Pushing up, pushing up. Okay, and there we go. So, we just... Um, had a level broken there all right everyone agreed there was our resistance at uh, support sorry and we've just broken it here so what do we do now we know the dailies sells we got our support broken we want to place our trade there you go okay now after this trade I'm gonna quickly explain something to you as well right which might make it a bit clearer on why this works right. um, oops, I need to find out what the pit value is okay 31 let's say 31 let's just go 33 all right okay so we're a couple of pips above the high of that candle does everyone understand what I'm doing when I do that if you just give me a yes or no please so I'm always adding two points above from the, the value of the tip of this candle. Okay. Yes, yeah. Izzy put no. Okay. Um, Izzy, so what I'm doing is basically when I put this tool on, all right, let's say this is my stop here. Let me I'll just move this drawing thing. So let's say this here the, the the wick of this little candle here is where I, um, I'm starting to work out where my stop is so the price of this if I look to the right I'll just put this here you can see um, the, the black numbers to the right yeah is 1.2882 can you see that on the right hand side yeah okay then all I'm doing is I'm adding two to that, all right? I'm adding two points. So it will then go to one, two, eight, nine, okay? I'm adding two pips to go above this high. Does that make sense? Yeah, 
Yeah, okay, cool, lovely. So if I delete this, so what I'm doing is when I place my entry here on the close of the candle, I'm just putting this here at the tip. Let me see if I can zoom in a bit more for you guys to see. So I'm putting this on the tip, okay? Now this here, it says 308, yeah, 308. I'm just rounding that off to 30 pips. Okay, if I double click on this, this is my stop, 30 pips. I'm just adding to uh, 30 pips, okay? So then what that's done, can you see it's moved it two pips above the wick there? It's just giving me a little bit of breathing room. Yeah, I hope you got that. Okay, anyway, um, you guys, if, if you don't want to put it breathing, you can just put it on the tip of the wick if you want, if it just makes it easy and quicker for you guys, okay? Um, so anyway, let's play this, right? So, oh, risk to reward, we need to do 1.5. Uh, there. there you go, bang on. 1.5 risk to reward, okay? So we're risking 32 pips to make 47 pips. Let's play this. Okay, pushing down pushing down we got that daily pressure and there we go we've hit target again okay so there we have another win I'm hoping we're gonna get a loss because at the moment this looks too good to be true all right so now we've got three wins okay is everyone understanding that so far give me a yes Yeah. Okay, everyone can hear me all right, yeah? Chat's gone quiet, no one's typing. Can you all hear me, yeah? Okay, there we go, it's all coming through now. Wonderful. Right, I'm gonna quickly explain to you why this works as well. So if we're looking at a trending market, okay, um, what a lot of people do, and you might have seen on um, YouTube and other trading um, people teaching, is when they're looking for a trend okay so they're looking for a push uh, they've got their pullback okay and then they've got their push now what they say is I don't know if anyone's seen this or heard of this before is they say when it gets to support or resistance so support we want to wait for it to come back test support and then we're going to start entering here okay to then buy this market up has everyone seen that type of concept when trading give me a yes or no yeah yeah okay I'm gonna ask you guys this if you're waiting if the market breaks this level okay and you're waiting for it to push up then for it to come down to take a buying opportunity What's wrong with taking this bit? Why can't you take that push up that you're waiting to happen and then you're waiting for it to come back down? Why can't you take that push up? Okay. Do you see the part of the trade we're taking here? Because every time resistance or support gets broken, the market the market pushes up comes back goes up comes back goes up so we're taking this push we're taking this push we're taking this push rather than waiting for it to come back and get in here okay and get in here but by the time people wait for that I've already had my trade I'm done do you guys understand that? Does that make a bit, bit more sense why this works?
yeah that, that make it that makes it clearer yeah yeah people wait for a lot of confirmation they want to make sure they're right okay but by the time they wait to be right and get the confirmation they're missing out on moves okay we're not here to like yeah you do have to wait for confirmation don't get me wrong but what we want to do is we want to capture the best place um, that's going to give us how can I say so when we enter we don't want it to go against us as much all right we don't want it to come into the negative a lot ideally we want to catch it in a place where once we enter we're going to go straight into profit okay we're going to push towards that target so um, these are going to be the levels that push phase before we come back hesitate and then push we're trying to catch them push phases all right all right so let me do another one um delete this just delete all these okay so we're pushing down all right pushing down let's see if we get right, markets pushing up let's see what's happening okay um so free wins so far right daily back to the daily time frame still pushing down can you see we've had one two three days worth of pushing down okay so we're still going to stick to sell bias we're still going to go for sales we'll go back to the one hour <clears throat> we, we need to find a level of support to be broken all right the reason why i play it a little bit is because because there's no support here that I can see that I want to be broken. Now we've started pushing up, okay? I know in my head that this is gonna be a level, all right, to then break, all right? So that's why I play it forward a little bit, just to speed up the process. So let's go to the line chart. We can see we've got a lovely um, point there, all right? We're starting to create something here. Wherever that carries on holding, we don't know. We're not too fussed about that. This is the bit we're interested in, okay? Because we, we're looking for themselves. Um, so let's just clear that. All right, let's go back to chart. And what we're gonna do, remember, we need to adjust this line. We want it bang on them bodies, all right? Let's go. Let's wait for a candle to break, all right? Just check the chat, anyone chatting? No? So we're pushing, we're pushing, we're pushing. There you go. Okay, so we've got a candle that's just broken, all right? So we're gonna take a trade on this one. All our rules are met. Daily's going down. Um, one hour's broken uh, support to the downside. Let's put this on. So we're gonna go, we're gonna enter next bar market. Let's put this here so I can work out how many pips it is. Okay, 23 pips. Let's just add two more pips. So 23 for five. Okay, and then we're gonna go for a 1.5 to one. Okay, so there's our trade. And let's play, see what happens. Oh, look at that, okay. Let me zoom in here. Can you see we nearly got stopped out on that candle? Can everyone see that clearly? We just missed our stop. Yeah, that was close. Yeah, nearly spiked up, nearly hit, but we didn't. You see why I give it, like, if you look here, okay. I mean, it's only two pips, right? But you see why I give it a couple of pips? It just gives it that, because this level got tested here, all right? This close got tested. So I give it a couple of pips for breathing room. I mean, you can go more. You can go five, ten. You can even put it above above one of these candles if you want, like the previous candle or whatever. Um, I'm happy with two pips because because of the selling pressure, right? And I don't expect the previous candle to be broken when I take these trades. I mean, if you look here. This one never got broken. This one never got broken. This one never got broken. This never got broken. So the likelihood that a candle is going to get broken is is quite low. All right. Same with fear. I mean, look, 
this one didn't get broken this never broke previous this one okay it broke but then look that didn't break previous this one just about this never broke it so again you've got a high probability chance that the previous candle isn't going to get broken but just give yourself a little bit of breathing room just to um, just in case like that did that would have that would have spiked us and stopped us out all right um don't know we might actually even get stopped out on this one. Oh, there we go look at that we got stopped out okay lovely one loss i like it when we have a loss it shows that my system isn't like some hundred percent winning system but then look what happened okay look at this candle all right look at that so we're just unfortunate but you can see the concept of the trade yeah you can see it play out nicely even though we got stopped out so i'm gonna add another loss to that re-entry yes you can re-enter okay and i'm gonna show you that now as well so we've got one loss uh, so i'm using two bits of software here right as far as re-entry goes on this particular trade yes i would have okay and i'll explain to you why so if we just delete this off what i'm gonna do let me rewind this and cancel that uh we'll go here all right now you need to look at these candles as a bit of a story as well all right we know on the daily we're bearish we're going down okay this is the level of support we're looking to break this candle broke it and then we spiked back up into this zone here all right we've got a zone here that we push back up into but we never broke above this here did we so technically we're still in a downtrend does everyone agree with that we never broke that lower high yeah okay then what did then this candle here okay broke for me two levels of structure right and i'm going to show you them two levels now okay let me delete these off if we go back to our line tool all right i'm going to rewind this one more I'm rewind this one more candle okay so you guys can see okay so that's the one that come back in all right uh if we go to our line chart right we had this was our support we was looking at so our resistance and can you see here we made we made another support level they want to understand that yeah simple support and resistance go back to our chart let's just adjust these all right so we got support we made another support support also support and resistance you need at least a minimum of two candles all right so two candles to to hold a level side by side like that you can see we've got two here we've got two here all right i mean this is getting a little bit technical but if you want to re-enter you can okay and we're looking at the story at what these bodies are doing so we pulled back in what's this next candle done this next candle has broken this level of support and this level of support. Does everyone agree with me? It's just broken two levels of support. Yeah. So let's think about it. The daily is bearish. We've broken two strong levels of support is it not wise to take this trade is it not met all of our rules let's let's take this trade okay we're going to enter next bar market now my only oh maybe i should uh, yeah my only reservation on this is the size of the candle okay um i i don't like massive massive candles but purely for the rules of this strategy i'm going to take this okay um sometimes when the candles are so big you get like um a bit of relief in the market and then 
and then you might find that the market then comes down okay i don't like that drawdown period uh, when i say drawdown i don't like it to go into the negative too much but um it's fine we'll take this anyway but that's obviously comes with experience you'll notice that with experience so the tip is 55 pips let's add a couple more to that let's go it's actually 60 55 9 um yeah, sorry 56 let's go 58 okay for our stop all right a couple of pips above and then we'll go 1.5 also when a candle is really big not only is your stop big but your target's really big as well okay so there we go a nice big trade deal right which means we'll be in this longer as well right let's play this okay we're pushing down so we've got that momentum you can see it didn't really come back in to the negative okay pushing down pushing down there we go another one done okay simple is everyone happy with that so far yeah does everyone understand how the rules are to this system does everyone understand how to trade this No, if someone doesn't understand it, please say, okay? I'm going to try some more. Testing, testing, not trading it, okay? Vanita, you're testing it. Okay. Are you guys happy to go um, into Q&A? Or um, do you want me to keep taking trades? Well, I could do this for hours. But if you guys have all got it, I don't see the need to keep firing them off. So if you want Q&A, put Q&A. If you want me to keep going, just type in keep trading. And then after Q&A, we can end the, the session. Got one more trade. Keep going. All right. Well, I'll take a cup. I'm going to leave away. Okay. Let's take, what I'll do, um, let's take some, we'll take a couple of bullish ones, yeah, and then we'll go Q&A. All right, just to get your minds off the, the, the bearish thing, all right? Um, just to say as well, all right, um, so we've had three wins and one loss, okay? Uh, I want you guys to um, just understand the maths behind this as well, quickly, before I go to bullish, doing some bullish ones. Um so if we risked one percent per trade okay um i think by practicing make it a lot more clear yeah practice 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 uh, practice back test back test watch i'm going to upload this video again so you guys can watch this over and over again as many times as you want um until you really understand it but if anyone has problems please just message me after or ask me in the q a in a bit yeah um, but anyway, going back to this risk to reward, right? If we risked one percent per trade, all right? Let me get um, yeah, this thing up. Okay. So if we risk at uh, risk one percent per trade, our wins would have come to three percent. Okay. Three um, percent. Uh, let's just make this bigger so you guys can see all right anyway you know what i'm not going to use that ignore that for a minute let's just delete that after let's use this it's easier right so our wins would have come to three percent all right and our losses would have been uh, minus 1%, giving us a total of 
2% win, okay? Right, that's risking 1% per trade, okay? Now, we risk 1.5 per trade. So, if I do 1.5 times 3, that's... So we made 4.5%, okay, risking one, um, having a target of 1.5, sorry. So we risk 1%, we had a target of 1.5. So we've now increased it by 1.5%, okay. But we lost, minus, we lost 1%, because remember, we're risking 1% still, but our target is that little bit bigger. It's the 1.5. So we lost 1%, okay. So now our total is 3.5%, okay, win. So do you see how risking that half a percent extra has just given you an additional 1.5%? Everyone understand? Is that clear? Yeah? I think it was Vanita, did you ask me about the 1%? Did that make a bit of sense? I need to show you that um, calculator as well. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, let me go take a couple of bullish trades um, and then we'll go over to Q&A and I'll show you where you can find um, percent risk and uh, anything else you guys want. So, um, let's clear drawings. Okay, let's, um, oh, I need to get my mouse. Okay. Delete that. What is going on with this? All right, let's just find a bit of bullish. Okay. This bit's bullish here, so I'm just going to do this, all right? Start from um, start because okay, the trend starts about here. Let's start from here because this is this bit's consolidation. Can you see that? So I'm not going to bother doing. Okay, let me explain this as well. When it comes to consolidation, if you notice the market's consolidating like this, just moving sideways. Um, either look at a different currency pair, one that's trending, um, or if you're um, I mean, look, I only trade, if you look over here, I only trade three currency pairs. I don't have a massive portfolio. Okay, most of my trades are on Euro Dollar anyway. Um, and I get some on Pound Yen, I get the rare one on Pound Dollar, okay? Um, so you don't need a lot of pairs to do this either. You can make, every day you can pretty much pull off a trade. But if you see the markets like this, then yeah, maybe have a couple more pairs that you can come to and, and then if you see the market's trending nicely like this um, and it looks like it's going up, then you can obviously uh, take them uh, trading opportunities. So um, I'm gonna start the trend down here because this is like, looks like the peak of it. Um, let's just go right there by the peak, okay. Oops. Wrong tool again. I'm like an amateur at this. All right. Now we we didn't know we was gonna come out of consolidation. Right, I'm cheating a little bit there, but we know it's an uptrend, so I'm gonna get some trades out of it. All right, let's just have a go. Right. So first things first, we go to the daily. What is the daily doing, everyone? What's this doing? Yeah, up, pushing up, moving up. Lovely, thank you. Okay, let's go to the one hour. Remember, we're only using the daily and the one hour time frame, yeah? So only two time frames you really need. Um, don't really need any other time frames. Uh, then we wanna go to our line chart and we'll look for support and resistance. Uh, ones that stand out to you. You, know, you don't want, you see like here, okay? Got like a little one here. 
Um, you don't really want that because if we go to this, you see there's like nothing really there. Ideally, you want levels like here. If you're happy doing it like this, you can. Um, if you want to go to the line chart and pick out the pe peaks, you can. Um, you can see if I bring this along, there's a nice one there. It's entirely up to you guys, all right? Um, so I'll just, I'll leave that to you. Okay, chat, nothing's in the chat. Right, so we're gonna put the line at the bodies and daily's up. So we're waiting for resistance to be broken. Let's go. Right, pushing up, pushing up. Oh, look at that, spiked up, didn't close. We're waiting for that body, remember? Ignore the wicks, there we go. Okay, we've got a nice candle here, just pushed up, all right? Um, again, massive candle. We might get a bit of retracement on this. I'm not too sure. Huge candle, but let's go. So, we're gonna enter. Okay, gonna enter there. Go down here. Put this to the wick. Again, you guys can leave it at a wick if you want, but I'm still gonna add a few pips to it. 32. Let's go 34 or 35, whatever you're happy with. Okay, just a little bit of breathing room and then we'll go for a target. It's gonna be huge this target. Uh, 1.5. There we go. So we got our 1 to 1.5. We broke resistance. Daily's bullish. Let's have a look what happens. Okay, we pulled back. We didn't get stopped out, okay. We didn't even test uh, the body of the candle. Oh, pushing down. We might get stopped out of this one. Still, can you see? Look, can you see we're holding that level? If I zoom in, can you guys see something's happening at this level here? Can everyone see that? Every time it pushes down, buyers are uh, saying, nope, go back up. Yeah, respecting that level, yeah? So when you see things like that as well, don't get too scared. I mean, you could get wicked out, but here's what it is. Pushing up. Now we're getting a bit more confidence in the trade. Green candle, green candle. Oh, a bit more confidence. Hesitation, hesitation, hesitation. Oh, wow. Come on. Oh man, I hate these trades. You sit there and try not to watch these trades when they happen in real life. You'll pull your hair out. There we go. All right, so there's another trade. This is a bit more like normal life. <laughs> Finally, I oh, know. Yeah, this is more like real life because the other ones we took, a lot of them just literally just hammered through. Um, you get them, but a lot of times you get these as well, okay? So if we look at this, um, on a time basis, we was in an hour, okay? Each one of these candles represent an hour. So we entered here, we was in this trade for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 hours, okay? Now for me, that, that's a long time. I'm, I don't like being in trades that long. So after a few hours, if I got up to here, I must well would have closed the trade and finish for the day i don't like to be sitting there in a trade all day because anything can happen but if you held you would have hit your target and just think 17 hours to make one and a half percent that you wouldn't get in a bank all year it's a small price to pay a uh, small price to pay sorry okay right let's do another one now in theory what should happen now is okay i think it might happen i don't know this should technically come down then people will start looking to buy at this level and then um push up okay remember that's what people are waiting for this why not just take that i don't understand all right so let's wait for the market to pull back a bit to give us a bit of resistance oh okay well we just move sideways and there might have even been one there yeah anyway that's not a good one to show you so okay we're pulling back okay we're pulling back we're holding a level now right we're holding a level here okay 
can you guys see this is starting to become resistance does that make sense to everyone that that's becoming resistance look at the bodies yeah from what we've gone through does everyone understand that look can't break can't break can't break we're just moving sideways yeah all right so what we're gonna do let's um ideally i would like this to pull down a bit okay let's go to daily because we ain't done our daily check right so we come to the market we're looking daily's bullish okay we're only looking for buys all right go to one hour we're seeing uh, it's getting a bit more technical now but we're seeing that the market's pushing up we're reading them candles we're looking okay we understand that if we go here we're looking for these sorts of levels all right these um these resistance levels where the market can't break can't break okay these these little triangles we got another one here so let's see if what happens here whether we get a pullback or not and whether we break this level look we're still holding ah oh, there we go okay so i need to adjust this remember because of the um the bars all right so we noticed that notice that notice and then we got this candle that has just pushed up and broke now you can take this one or if you want you can um always wait if you're not happy with it you can wait for a clear remove so then you get that kind of push up um with a better maybe resistance higher up okay but i'm i think that should be fine okay we might get stopped at this one because it's wicking up and down but let's take it anyway rules are rules every time you see it set up you take it all right so there we go uh there's the body that's another thing if you've got a strategy that is higher than a 50 percent win rate okay you want to take that every time because it's all about probabilities so let's just this is 22 pips 22 three, 24 i like my two pips there we go, and then we're gonna go up. Okay, there's 1.5, all right? So 1.5 to one. Let's see what happens. Push up. We're hesitating, we're moving sideways again. Can you see this? This level here. We're looking at them candle bodies, all right? Ignore the wicks. Now look, we just broke structure. So this should give you a bit more confidence that this could push up, okay? Potentially there's another little trade here if you wanted to take it. And there you go, all right? Hit target again, did that make sense? Beautiful, I know. Sexy, isn't it? <laughs> and so simple, two time frames daily bias if you're going up you just want resistance to break if the daily candle is going down you want support to break so we are looking for but the key to this is understanding where the support and resistance is okay that's what you need to practice if you guys can get good at finding this support and resistance like i just identified there you'll pull off really good trades okay there was one here all right can you see this level here that we just moved sideways all right i would have taken a trade here if i was actually trading personally all right because i can see look it's hesitating 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 that become resistance this candle here broke out all right this little one here if i put my trade on there stop so that stop there tiny little stop four pips uh, four. let's go six six pips okay we've got a little gap can you guys see the candle i'm looking at this one here yeah can you all see that shall we one yeah so i'm looking at
I'm looking at that candle there, yeah? Because it broke this level of resistance to the right, okay? And then we want our 1.5, uh, 1 1.5, okay. And then, there you go, so another one done. And that's only 10 pips, tiny move, but you made 1.5% in 10 pips. <clears throat> okay. So, I think, um, you guys get that, it's very simple. This is gonna be recorded anyway, so um, you guys can watch that as, as many times as you want. I will send you guys this by uh, email. I'll send like a link once it's uploaded somewhere. Um, I don't know where I'm gonna do it. But um, let's move on to um, Q&A, questions and answers. Um, if anyone's got anything for me. If not, then I think that is about it for the webinar. So, question.